dabbled in it mm -hmm. uh, ever since high school. But no, painting was, was pretty much what, what I wanted to do. Um, and I just sort of got into it by default. Yeah. once a week to retain that sort of information and find your way back into the studio but um, no I, I hope you're because it's it's so broad you know you can it, it is fun and it's since fun. we're in such different stages of our work being you know fresh off the wheel uh, bone dry in the fist hey man. I'm Tim Wallace Tim Wallace and grew up in Maine um, I did my undergraduate work at the University of Southern Maine. I got my Bachelor of Fine Arts from the Southern University of Southern Maine. I had a concentration in painting and a art, um, art education minor. And towards the end of my schooling, I ended up switching over to uh, being a ceramics major because I got a job working for a production potter and just fell in love with wheel thrown work and gravitated towards that more and then I found that clay can take on just as much if not more than what painting can do. It can take on all the same properties. You can paint on it, uh, draw on it, carve into it. Decided to the, the next step would be to go to grad school. So I came down here to Washington DC to go to grad school at uh, the George Washington University. So I was there for about three years, graduated in 2003. What I really want to do is, is teach, but trying to teach is to get a full-time tenure track position at, on, on the college level, everybody wants that too, so that's, that's kind of difficult. So trying to break into that and, and teaching, I, I love teaching, plus it also gives me a studio to work in because unlike painting, you can't paint in your, your I mean, you can't do ceramics in, in your apartment, whereas you could with paint. Just growing up, always drawing, um, you know, painting, just since I was little. Uh, I have older siblings and they always drew and painted, so that sort of fostered that. Well, I, I work within the limitations of, of the potter's wheel just because I've always been fascinated with, with the wheel work, bottle forms, very functional forms. And coming from that production potter background, mm -hmm. I guess I, I limit myself to what the wheel forms can generate. Ceramics and the human figure are so closely related throughout history. Um, talk about the foot, the body, the shoulder, the, the lip. So I try to marry, I guess, the, the functionality of, of the piece being a hollow container with another statement beyond just what a pottery form can be. My, my forms aren't so much utilitarian as they are sculptural, but they, they could be utilitarian. Um, operation is the human figure uh, and the containability. Um, but I guess, I guess how I start is, I see how or what forms I can generate on the wheel. And how can I take that same information and just mix it up to create different forms. Um, so this is comprised of about 21 different wheel thrown forms. So I'll just start with a sketch, a technical drawing, and then I sort of guesstimate how big it has to be and then guess the, the shapes and guess how much clay I'm gonna need. I, I generally, <clears throat> once I throw the base, Everything else has to be thrown about two, two times. Like this, this form might be too big, might be too small. Mm -hmm. I might not have gotten the form correct. Um, what I'm trying to do is the, the more voluminous forms. This is where all the um, the quietness is. But I think I, I, I get I'm more interested in, in in the volume pushing out and anything that's more concave. That's where all the action is coming from. So mm -hmm. the limbs, the waist the neck, that seems to be all the action points um, of ceramics. But yeah, definitely things in magazines influence me. It's more daily life things, mm -hmm. like if I'm walking down the street and I see a, a lamppost with a particular shape, or um, especially in DC, the architecture is really great. Mostly, mostly just from daily life, you know, just try to look around and it changes your perception. Uh, right now I'm working on a, a wheel thrown chess set. and it, it's not so much that I'm all about chess, it's just the forms that I was working on sort of lent to, they kind of looked like those forms, so I thought it might be interesting to see that series uh, go that way. And it's, uh, yes, but it's been working out pretty good so far. So just bringing a different statement to the vessel, I guess, mm -hmm. and, and the human being a vessel and marrying those two aspects.
would you say you find more of your pieces uh, revolving in an organic way as opposed to geometric? Probably, um, they, they lend from a geometric form because uh, the wheel is so symmetrical. Mm -hmm. But I try to bring asymmetric, asymmetry and uh, a sense of balance and tension and movement to my pieces by how I cut, stack, mm -hmm. and join them. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So trying to take a piece from being static to active. Because the wheel has a certain uh, fluidity of movement to it, I try to capture that in my pieces. Mm -hmm. I try to reiterate that by the marks left by your fingers, the throw lines, um, which correlates to kind of the futurism movement. Uh, mm -hmm. Bociani, I'm really influenced by his work. Gotcha. Um, the whole idea of, of movement, uh, trains, was, automobiles. That was going to be my next question. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what artists, um, are there any other artists? Mm -hmm. that um, Picasso. Uh -huh. Actually, there's a great picture of his piece right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. his ceramic work. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting, the ceramic world doesn't really consider his ceramic work legit because he didn't actually throw the pieces, he actually had somebody else do it. Then he cut and composited them and put them together and, and uh, glazed and painted them. And the painting world doesn't see it legit because they don't see ceramics as high art. So his paintings that are priceless, mm -hmm. uh, his ceramic work is not so much. Right. So, but no, my, my forms are similar to that. Um, I'm, I'm mostly focused on ceramic artists, mm -hmm. um, that whole movement. I started in the 50s trying to bring ceramics into the realm of high art by um, taking functional objects out of that realm and cutting them up, reconstructing them, putting them back together and saying, look at a plate this way or look at a bowl this way mm -hmm. um, through texture and surface and glaze. Um, so I mostly draw up other ceramic artists um, sculptors. Can you show, uh, I guess, take a look at your chest pieces? Sure. Like we can go over it. Might be easier to at least bring these ones down. Okay. Just one of those. Beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. And I know you said these are pieces that are you're going to incorporate into a chess set or going to exactly. Chess set? Yep. So this is what I'm trying to do is since there's usually a set, say two two knights, two bishops. Instead of making the exact same knight, two of the exact same, mm -hmm. I'll try to bring a different. The general design is the same, but I try to bring different elements to each one. A little bit of different movement. And, and as you're making your, your work evolves anyway, of what you're thinking, what the next piece might be. You know, like, mm -hmm. oh, if I were to do this again, this is what I might do differently. Um, I think it's just more exciting to have similarities in pieces. Like, I'll show you my, my other bishop, which goes with this set. <coughs> but yet... So you can see yeah. the similarities, yet mm -hmm. they are completely different forms. Um, whether that's working or not, <clears throat> I, I, I don't know right now. Yeah, um, working me. <laughs> you can see the, the discs are the same, the general, the foot is the same. And the conclusion is similar. Mm -hmm. um, so I want them to relate as a set. The glaze will also tie them together design-wise as well. Um, but I'm finding that I have a masculine side and a feminine side, so mm -hmm. this obviously would be the more masculine piece, this would be the more feminine piece, which is which is kind of interesting. So there's, I'm finding, just through a happy accident, <clears throat> excuse me, that I'm bringing another statement to it by trying these different forms, mm -hmm. and one's a little bit more, um, maybe agile and, and fragile mm -hmm. looking, where the other one is a little bit more stoic and and stocky looking um, but I guess I guess how I start is I see how or what forms I can generate on the wheel and how can I take that same information and just mix it up to create different forms uh, I, I get I'm more interested in and in, in the volume pushing out 
and anything that's more concave, that's where all the action is coming from. So mm -hmm. the limbs, the waist, the neck, that seems to be all the action points. Um, whereas the more voluminous forms, um, I don't know, are, are a little bit more pleasing, I think. Then they speak a little bit more of ceramics. Mm -hmm. This, you can see, is um, you know pretty uh, static. And this is much more active, just because of the balance and the twist. Now, how long does it take you to, um, I guess, composite a piece? Because mm -hmm. you you can see the level of, uh, I guess, your your technique is just like, you know, line is pretty pretty perfect to your yeah, it's, it's, specification. It, it, so you, it's your balance is excellent. <laughs> pretty well th uh, thought out. Thanks. Um, like this piece took me about a month. Mm -hmm. They'll they take me about a month. Mm -hmm. the, it, it depends on how drastic the form is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two, two and a half weeks. This probably took me a little over a month. But mm -hmm. um, if I could get in here and work all day, every day, yeah, yeah it, would be, it would be different. But um, from teaching and working full time, it's, yeah. it's a little bit harder. Right. Um, but generally, yeah, about a month from start. Like, like the queen, which you might not be able to see so well, mm -hmm. um, probably took me longer than a month. And. The last piece, the king that I'm working on, I've already put about a month and a half into that. So it's complete. How many pieces will you have all together? Uh, I'm only doing one side, so there will be oh, okay. 16. So you have eight pawns and then eight of the other pieces. And I would like to do a whole other set, but I don't think I I need to. One, it's just taking me a long time to do this so far. Forms of the same form, like the bishops. That's enough of a statement to say. This suggests another side. Mm -hmm. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick two glazes as opposed to just one. Okay. Say I did um, like a brown, like a rich brown glaze. Mm -hmm. 16 pieces all brown mm -hmm. might be overwhelming. Right, so <laughs> if I take two glazes and I stagger every other one, one of these glazes, that's also going to suggest the other side. Plus it's going to break up maybe the monotony. Mm -hmm. So you, maybe you can see the, some, the forms a little bit better. Whereas if these were both brown, but one's maybe green and one's brown, they relate to each other in terms of the forms and the fact that it's a chess set, but there'll be it'll also speak of their their differences too. Excellent. Have you shown your work at any galleries? In in DC, um, not so much. Uh, that that's on my next list of things to do. Um, you know, I belong to a couple different organizations, public spaces mostly, mm -hmm. um, and really the only reason I haven't so much is because I feel the work that I've done. This has taken me about over a year. Mm -hmm. So the work that I did prior to that, I feel is too old and it doesn't really represent. Mm -hmm. There's a few gems on its own, interesting, but what does it really say? Right, right. So that, that's, that's the next step. Wish you the best, man. Well, thank you. Thank you, too.